Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is AP Physics Mechanics C. Today, I want to talk about an example of the motion of an object attached to a spring. So, a cart of mass m is on a level horizontal track. The cart is attached to one end of an ideal spring, and the other end of the spring is attached to a vertical support. The spring has a spring constant k. The cart is put to the right, stretching the spring a distance d, and released from rest at time t equals to zero. The cart spring system begins to oscillate, and the position x of the cart as a function of time t is given by equation x t equals to d cosine omega t, where x is in meters, omega is in radian per second, and t is in seconds. Assume the mass of the cart's wheels to be negligible. Part A derive an equation for the velocity of the car v as a function of time. So v, if we are given the x、uh, function, we can find v because v equals dx over dt. So just derivative of x function. Here is d is constant. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, but we have omega here. Using chain rule, you should have another term omega. Simplify it. V equals negative d omega sine omega t. Part B on the axis sketch a graph of velocity v of the car as a function of time for two complete oscillations. On the graph, capital T represents the time for one complete oscillation. Explicitly label、uh, asymptotes, maxima or minima, with algebraic expressions as appropriate. So we know here is one cycle, here's two cycle. Between the cycle, right in the middle, that's a half cycle. So those are all zero points. This is a negative sine function. Negative sine starts with zero, has to go down. So it looks like something like this. And we know you have the top value that should be omega times d, and on the bottom value should be negative omega times d. So those are your amplitudes. Part C express all answers in Part C in terms of omega t m d k and physical constants as appropriate. A,、uh, number one, determine the expression for kinetic energy of the system as a function of time. Kinetic energy is one half m v squared. We already know v as a function of t. Simply plug it in, and simplify the expression. You should have k as a function of time is one half m. D squared, omega squared, sine, omega t whole thing squared, and this negative sign disappears because the negative squared is just positive. Number two, determine expression for potential energy U of the system as a function of time. Potential energy equals to one half k x squared. We know what x is. Simply plug it in. Again, simplified expression. You should have one half k d squared times cosine omega t squared. Now, using the equation in one and two, those two equations to show the rate of change of total energy dE over dt equals to zero. That means、uh, to do that, we have to find e. What what is e total? E total is k plus u. K is this, and u is this. Simply substitute the two expressions in, and we have this expression. Let's take a look at this. This is cosine omega t squared. This is sine omega t squared. We also have one half and d squared in common, so the difference is this one has k, this one has m times omega squared. Those are different, but there is a relationship between the two in simple harmonic motion. Omega equals the square root of k over m, and so we substitute omega squared is just k over m. Substitute omega squared in the second part of your equation. You should have.、Um, Omega squared is k over m. You see how m and m cancels. So this is one half k d squared cosine squared or cosine omega t squared. The second part becomes one half k d squared、uh, sine omega t squared. Factoring the k d one half k d squared, so you have cosine omega t squared plus sine omega t squared. That is just one. So e is just one half k d squared. As you can see. Both k and d are constants, so e is constant. Therefore, d e over d t has to be zero, so it doesn't change with time. Next part: two identical springs are attached to each side of a card. 
of unknown mass. The cart is on a level horizontal track of negligible friction. A piece of clay is added to the top of the cart so that it will stick to the cart. The cart is displaced to the left a distance d and released from rest. The period of oscillation is recorded. This procedure is repeated for several different pieces of clay of different masses. So in each trial, the card is displaced the same distance. And the data are shown on the linear graph of t squared as a function of mc, where t is the period of oscillation, and mc represents the mass of clay. d from the graph determine the following. k, the spring constant of each spring. So let's take a look at a diagram. When you push the card to the left here, the card experiences two forces. A rightward force from the spring on the left, because this spring is compressed, is pushing the car to the right. And from the spring on the right is pulling the car to the right. So the net force on, on this card is this two force added together. By the way, each force exert a each force are the same. That should be equals to k times d, the displacement. Sum of the force, the net force on the card and the clay is 2f. The two add together. And if we have combined spring constant times d, that should be equals to f is force of spring is just kd, should be 2 times kd. So as you can see, the combined a uh, spring constant equals the two add together equals two times k of each individual. The two add together equals combined spring constant. So that's the part when the uh, springs are connected this way, the combined spring constant is the two add together. So let's take a look from the period um, the relationship between period m and k, we know t equals to 2 pi m prime divided by k prime. m prime is combined mass. k prime is combined k. From here, if we square both, so why do we square it? Because we're trying to match with this graph, t squared versus m. So in this, in this equation, and, and this graph, the slope is really 4 pi squared over k prime. So we can find slope. If we find slope, we can find k prime. If we find k prime, we can find k. So the first is to find slope. k prime equals to this, that equals to 2k. So slope, we have to choose two points on the line. So I choose this point and that point because it's easy for me to figure it out. So um, here, the first point, the top point here is t squared is 0.7. And the lower point t squared is 0.2, then corresponding x point. So my slope is 0.5 second squared over k a kilogram. So make sure always, always have your units for each quantity you derived. Now you have k prime, 4 pi squared divided by 0.5. That gives me 79 newton per meter. From k prime, I can find k. So k equals 39.5 newton per meter. And that is what they are asking you to find. That's part one. Part two, what is the mass of the card? Again, let's go back to the equation. Here is the equation. m prime, so we know k prime is 2k. m prime is just m card plus m of clay. We can look for a point on the line, simply choose a point on the line, plug in the known values to find m card. So I've chosen this point. This point, I know t squared is 0.7. I know the mc is 1.125. Um, I know k already, k prime already, so the only unknown is the card. Plug everything in. So you should have 4 pi squared over, this is k prime, which is 79. You can solve for the mass of the card, which is 0.275 kilograms. Last part, the experiment is repeated, but in a second set of trials, the card is put back a distance capital D, where capital D is greater than lowercase d. 
Describe any change that will occur for the straight line on the graph for part D. Justify your answer. So, what does that mean when you pull it back further? When you pull it back further, actually, you are giving it a greater energy because what you change is the amplitude. Now, let's go back to the graph. What does this graph represent? This slope we said equals to four pi squared over k, and this is combined k. This ampli this combined k equals to the、uh, the k of two spring add together has nothing to do with amplitude. So the slope is not changing. The graph is not going to change. The slope is determined by the combined spring constant, not amplitude. Right. Therefore, the graph will remain the same. Okay, that's it for this question. Thanks for watching. See you next time.